What is going on guys? Keen Flame here, back with another game. So today we're going to do something different. We're not going to really cast the game. We are just going to analyze the game. And then I'm going to teach you guys how to analyze uh, a pro game, right? So, and what player better to analyze a pro game with than Green Sea Squash himself? So, in my opinion, like if you're going to analyze a game, uh, you have to download like a recorded game of a player that like knows his build orders, that is very smart uh, tactically and strategically. So, Green Sea Squash fits that bill, right? And there's a couple of other players, of course, that you can also watch, which is fine. Um, but you got to be able to see the miss. You got to be able to see the. Um, how do I say this? Like you got to be able to see. Uh, and recognize the mistakes they make so you don't copy the wrong stuff uh which is just honestly just gameplay experience but so i'll show you guys how i analyze personally and how i how i uh improve at the game by watching these games so uh let's get into, get into it right so honestly more than the fighting like you don't really want to look at the fighting too much the thing that's most interesting is actually the, the economy, right? Um, so you can see right here that Green Sea Squash uh, started with uh, five on food, but as you notice, noticed, he scouted this part. And why did he do that? Well, he had to find a second hunt because this one is going to run out pretty soon. So scouting the caribou with the pharaoh when you're playing raw is very important. But after that, all you have to do is just find your settlement that you will expand to and just scout in this case, on this map, right? Like all the walrus are in the middle. So you kind of want to have like an idea how far they are. So he can tell based on this, that the walrus that are going to be here, uh, which is true, you can see. So he also knows that he, he's playing as Loki, which is very aggressive. So he can basically not even take this hunt in the middle right but it is still important to take this hunt um what m the mistake that most raw players will do is that they'll put villagers to wood in classic which you can basically not do especially on an open map like this like you can see this map is super open and super punishing so if you put v villagers to wood in classical age you're basically gonna be behind Anyway, I'm 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 already ranting on, so um, let's just let's let's just analyze. So basically, he put um nine to food, or well, first he put five to food, right? Then he put two to gold. He put the priest right away on the mining camp to get the empowerment. He's only building houses in this spot because he knows he, like he doesn't want the low key player to basically to to raid his gold mine, right? That's why he's doing it. Also. He needs the monument because he knows he cannot um, take the hunt in the middle, right? And you can already see there's not many goats. So he does need the monument uh, to get the shit of upgrades for the cheaper farms, right? Like that's that's the upgrade you want to get from uh, the top. So you can already kind of see where this is going. So um, he's going to... He ate basically all the food from his initial hunt and he's going to build his base very defensively. So this is like the first point you can already get from this. Build your houses very defensively on key points like the gold mine and cut off any uh, points that he might get into your base, right? So next point is uh, do not gather wood on Egypt if you're playing against a very aggressive god in the archaic age, right? Like you want to gather the wood after you click advance which he's going to do right now. Next point is that if you take this town center, you will not have enough food or or resources because there's only two goats. He will have not have not enough uh, resources to take this town center, make farms, and make an army. And the low-key player is not going to allow him to go fast heroic, right? Like you would have to stay, stay one town center, but you only have one gold mine, which will run out. So then you will lose at a large gold mine. So Green Sea Squash recognizes that he is against Loki, who is going to make mainly Hercers, right? 
So what do you do? You make X-Men and Spearman because he is going to react uh, with Radiant Cavalry right after. So now his hunt is actually safe because he has some army defenders, so he can make a transition to another town center or to farms after this. Um, basically, um, after this, he put two villages on loot just so he has enough to slowly get the shoot of upgrade and to slowly get the husbandry, the pickaxe upgrade, and everything else like the plow. You can also you can also see that he's playing quite aggressive, right? Like he's trying to like stop the Loki from getting to like a critical mass early on. So you wanna to relieve pressure, you gotta put pressure. So this is what Green Sea Squash is doing right now. So you can already see he is slowing down um, the the push of uh, Gabu by putting him, him off hunt. So this is where like the map knowledge comes in because on this map, the walruses are in the middle, and the second hunt is gonna run out rel relatively soon. So any smart player will take the forward hunt first um, to eat this first and then move back here. So Green Sea knows this and he's pushing, like he's punishing anything that Gabu might be doing. So he's going right after the hunt and he knows that Loki players, they like to make Ursers, right? So um, just make X-Men basically and put the pressure on, right? So now the hunt has ran out, and um, you can see he switched to making uh, a little bit more villagers to gold now, and now he's making a little bit more to food. Why? Because these berries are going to run out soon, and he needs to stack some more food to uh, to make more excellent. <laughs> it's actually funny because I said I was not going to focus on the fights that much, but in this case, it is actually pretty important because he is like pushing him off the wood, off the hunt, right? Anyway, because he is putting this pressure down, he can take this town center now. If he did not take this town center, this gold mine would be like basically wide open, so he would not be able to defend it, right? And he also kept some army at home. So this is another point. Like if you do take a town center as a defensive guy, you need to have some army here to defend yourself. So let's see how this is going to go. So you can see he is micro and his priest around the town center. And he has his pharaoh micro on the troll. Okay. But you can see, like, the town center is still going up, right? So he, he is fine now. And then now he can, now finally, he can make the farm transition. The goats are about 200 food, which is not optimal, but he doesn't have many, so he doesn't have a choice, right? He is playing well. And you can also see on this map, uh, a lot of the goats are on the ice. You can see a lot of our, a lot of goats are still unscouted. So we actually send, like, little spearmen to, to retrieve these goats just to get that extra little food because as you all know Ra is not that good at scouting right so this is why he sent little uh, like a little spearman and get these goats in so just to make it the farm transition a little bit more smooth and as you can see so the order basically is husbandry um shaduf pickaxe and then plow so Plow basically is efficient once you have more than six farms. That's when you want to get plow. So let's see, control G, control N. So let me see. So let's see if he's going to get, he's probably going to get plow first. That's my guess. But yeah, basically all he has to do right now is just make sure this gold mine does not get hit. And he needs to basically keep making army because if he does not make army, uh, Loki will just fast heroic and just push you off this goal. So he's just making sure Loki cannot inflict any free damage. And you can see even the armory is like lined up so he can protect this gold mine because it's very important. Basically, if he, if he does not have gold right, then he cannot make the farms. 
Yeah, so there it is. He's upgrading the power upgrade, and now he's casting rain. So um, you can already see uh, Gabu is uh, putting dwarves to food with me, which means he's going uh, to heroic soon. If you didn't know, you want to put about twelve dwarves to gold and then the rest to food, so to get like a smooth heroic timing. Um, so right now he's just basically pulling the villagers. The only thing that he's missing, right? Like th this is a, uh, a mistake, right? He doesn't have uh, skin of the rhino, which you definitely want here, right? So that's what I talked about. Like you gotta realize what's a mistake and what's actually intended. So a mistake here is definitely that he forgot uh, skin of the rhino. And you can see how easy those villagers died. Which actually made the game a lot harder for him because he did not have that upgrade. So let's fast forward a little bit. And now you can see he is going Hathor, right? It's probably the best choice right now. I mean, you, you could also go for, um, let me see, you could also go for the Citadel so you protect this settlement. Um, but then again, the rock is really useful, the locust is really useful, just to slow Loki down a little bit, you know? So, it seems like he actually forgot the pickaxe. So that's another uh, little mistake. But so far, like I think a lot of you guys watching uh, would have just gone like one TC fast heroic, or they would have just taken the second town center right away and they would have gotten stopped and they would already have lost the game by now, right? So we've all been there against Loki and you're just wondering like, what the hell did I do wrong? Well, let's see what, what Green Sea does here and then we know, you know, how to beat Loki on, a, on an open map like this. So does he have skin on the right of yet? No. So, right now, what you want to do is make the Migdol very, very, very defensively. Because if you make it right here, like, you, you, you cannot even get it up. That's what she said. Um, you cannot even get it up, right? So, you, you, you have to, like, make it, like, the first Migdol in this type of situation, you have to make it very, very safe. Otherwise, it's just going to be a waste of gold, and you do not have that gold. Like, you cannot afford to lose it, right? So, he is actually choosing to build it right here because he wants to secure the gold mine. Um, probably for the best, actually. Yeah, that's good. So, um, I would have probably destroyed his house here just to get through and rebuild it later because now he has to go all the way around, right? Um, that's just a little detail. Doesn't matter too much though. But... So you can see he's put a little bit more to wood right now. He has about 25 on food. He's making sure he's eating all the goats. And now he's just making chariots, X-Men. Mostly chariots. And why is chariot a good idea right now? Because he has very little gold, right? Chariots are only um, 40 gold, so it's very cheap. It's a uh, very, very good value. So here's the locust probably. Okay, let, let's see. So here you got to pay attention to the micro because this is a really, really tough spot to be in, right? Um, he has flaming weapons. So what you want to do is create like a choke point, for example, between the granary and the McDo, right? And you want to pick off the high profile units. Like you want to pick off the, the battle boar with the priest or the pharaoh. Um, you just want to pick off whatever is getting close to you here, right? So there's the locust at the same time. That's not a little trick like He's applying the pressure, but he's also bringing it back with a locust here. So right now the attacker has to focus on two things, making sure he does not lose the dwarves 
but at the same time making sure he doesn't lose the fight so that's like another trick how you can apply pressure and make the make the attacker make it harder for the attacker basically right so this is like the weakness of raw basically like if you're playing loki you want to get those myth units out because uh raw does not have access to the nephthys uh, priest so making the battle board is a really good idea they're also very good against buildings you can see these three just nosing the tc down just smacking their golden metal noses against the town center right um but yeah so far green sea seems to be holding up very well and you know like gabu has to put everything in the, into this attack so he knows that uh gabu cannot be here at the same time right so this is like a perfect moment to get some villagers down here just in case you get pushed off here right so basically what you can learn from this game is that you have to be very uh calculated and that you cannot just go blindly for like a 2 or 1 TC faster road. Like you actually have to make the barrack units to survive on these type of open maps. So you can also see he made like a bunch of more priests. And right now, um, uh, you should not be mistaken. Uh, just because Norse lost their army doesn't mean you're in a good spot right now. Because... Norse economy is very strong. Like all they have to do is take a second town center here, and they're completely okay. Like, what is um, what are these chariots gonna do right now? Besides, besides shift and send it. But let, let, let's pause for a second. So, let's say you take this town center right here. Like, what is this chariot gonna do? Basically, nothing. Like, it's gonna shoot the TC, but there's no siege to take it down. So that's how you can stall the game if you're a Norse player. Like, you just take this town center and just chill for a little bit because he has no siege right now so you have a little bit of a window anyway basically uh squash didn't waste his shift and sense early on so now he can do the counter attacks uh with the shift and sense like he doesn't have enough to fight his army but he does have enough army to so just push him off the gold mine right here and this allows green sea squash to uh Probably take this town center as well, and then he's gonna be well on his way to booming and booming and booming more and more. And as the game goes on, Ra is gonna go, only get gonna get stronger and stronger. So this is a place you wanna be in, definitely. All right, let's see. So you can see he's ju he just keeps making um, more and more X Men. Because, you know, most Loki players, all they do is just make X-Men, right? So, another Amygdal coming down. So you can see, like, this is the thing about his map. Like, all the gold mines are on the edges, right? As you can see. So he's just putting on the pressure, making sure that the Loki player has no goal to make the better wars or the Hersers, right? So he's just defending the spot here and applying pressure on the same time. What a Loki player should do here is like send some army over here and like send an army through here and then come from the back, right? And raid these villagers. Like you have to apply pressure to, look, to relieve the pressure. But instead, the Loki player is just attacking head on, thinking he can pull through, like through the middle. But it just doesn't work like that. Like, you have to put the pressure on the gold villagers. It's like you have to be like a, a heat seeking rocket when it comes to your army. Like, you have to seek those villagers out. Like, the easiest way to win, like, if you're a new player, the easiest way to win in Age Mythology is just go for the gold villagers. Because if the enemy has no gold, then you just you just win because they cannot make any units but yeah uh you can see like um like squash is higher score right now and he's like set up very well he's about to take a third town center like i said he's putting the pressure on the gold villagers and he's raw and it's about it to go into late game right so at this point, Loki has lost so much units, and he's still in one town center that 
he's probably just, you know, he's probably done for. So let's just fast play this game and go until the end. Squash is gonna wall up. He's gonna get the fortified town center upgrade for more population. And he's just gonna basically camp on this gold mine and just making sure he has no gold at all. There it is. There it is, boys. So, um, it's not the typical commentary, you know, but I hope you guys still enjoyed it. Maybe learned a thing or two. And, um, that is all for today. So, um, oh, he, he was even going Osiris. Anyway, guys, peace out, boys. See you in the next video. All right. Peace out, boys. Yeah.